Remember to like, subscribe, and if you want to show support for the show, check out the video description for a link to our Buy Me a Coffee website thing. We appreciate any and all support that you've given us so far, and hopefully we'll continue to in the future. Hi, this is Ryan with Better Head Saying. We got uh, another email. Figured that we'll answer your questions today. This is from Sebastian, who has said he's having issues with single needle tattoo. Uh, applications where the ink flow is a problem. So we'll go over this in a second, see if we can come up with an answer. Rock and roll. Bah. All right, now that's over. Sebastian wrote in, uh, that's a pretty long email, which is great. Like, honestly, I'd rather have more information than not instead of people writing in single sentence, which is fine still, but... This one's great because it's showing everything that Sebastian has tried while trying to fix this. So, also I changed my microphone with my recording because hearing everything was scratchy and I'm not re-recording anything I've done, but hopefully this sounds better than last time. <laughs> Anyways, we're having some issues where the machine that Sebastian is using, which is a direct drive, right? So direct drive is gonna have cam, and we'll have our chuck with the, however the orientation is that's coming off this with the needle that's coming down out of said tube and i'll have a band or two or three or whatever your application is or we're going to be seeing on top of this right <clears throat> so let's just label a few things here cam we've got our needle Oop. Our tube and our outlet. So we, we talked about this on our show as well, uh, the podcast, uh, me and Brian did, where we actually came out kind of funny because both of us run our needles in the tubes a bit differently, which is kind of fun. So uh, I'll go over some of this stuff as well. Um, I may not cover everything, but if you do want to go listen to the show, Sebastian, we did, we did talk about it for a good 20 or 30 minutes. Um, so you can get two opinions on top of that as well. So first thing uh, after reading your email, I had thought, is, is causing an issue is maybe possibly just the machine that you're using. Now, I know that this, this is not gonna make you go and change your machines, but I did want to talk about this a little bit more in detail because we didn't really get into it in the podcast. Um, <clears throat> specifically about direct drive, so we'll go DD, rotaries. Um, w when you get into these, the actual mechanical operation is gonna be a bit different than we see like coils or cartridge machines or you know just other rotaries in general. With these cams that are spinning around, you have hang points inside them where the needle is gonna be adjusting and coming around, right, that actual mounting point as it spins around, right? And normally with circular cams, we're gonna have three hang points where the needle is gonna have to adjust and move from one position to another while it's coming around. And more often than not, you're actually gonna have a very specific hang point at the top and at the bottom where the needle is literally gonna be changing axis, right? <clears throat> so when you get to here, we have some hang. That hang that comes into the machine, especially if it's running uh, pretty slowly, which, I mean, you had said you're running yours about five and a half volts. Um, I know some people who use these maybe from three to three and a half, maybe four or five volts. Um, and what happens is that hang at a slow moving can actually cause the pigment to get picked back up and move up the tube, delaying it from coming out, right? Um, especially if you're gonna be using a band setup on the backside of the actual tube. So if we look at the tube with our outlet, right? We have our needle coming through, solder up or down, whatever, don't really care. Um, <clears throat> with the band pressure that's keeping it held back on there, when the needle's coming down, this fluid that's inside here, our pigment, is gonna want to, to come out because it's being drug out by that needle. But if the needle stops for a split second, there's gonna be some <laughs> hydrophobic or hydroscopic forces that are gonna be applied towards the end of the tube where they all of a sudden will get a pooling of pigment, very, very small and minuscule, which is going to basically lock the end of that tube especially if all of your feet is just going to be coming down around the back and the sides of that needle. This is going to get pretty technical and I'm not going to go too far into it, but something to think about. If that happens, basically the pigment that's trying to come out will bounce off of 
that locked like water <laughs> dyed water that we're going to be seeing on top of this and this will happen with anything that's going to be very very well like less viscous than we we would see um normally with our pigments and i'd seen you'd use various different brands of pigments which is you know great trying stuff and maybe it's a little bit thicker a little bit thinner and uh <clears throat> more often than not my first thing to be with, with, with checking this stuff is if this type of force is going to be occurring, what's going to happen is, is it'll happen when, when the machine isn't touching skin. It's just going to get locked in there and basically just create like a bladder or a vacuum where the, the fluid is just going to be bouncing around down at the bottom of that, that actual tube tip. And then as soon as you end up touching the skin to a degree where as the, the needle is striking the skin, especially because it's a single needle configuration, you're going to be getting a bit of a bow as it strikes, especially if you're going to be dragging your needle, right? Pulling backwards. It's going to bow off the back of that tube, opening up a larger cavity, which is going to allow the ink just to spill out, right? So <clears throat> a few things to think about with this directionality when you're using a tube like this, diamond round, whatever you're going to be using. I mean, you can take a flat tube, uh, open faced like a shovel tip flap. You can turn it on a 90 and just use the, the cornered angle off of one of those to try and run this as well. So you can maybe pay attention to see how that ink is flowing. Um, you're going to see it spill out and then you just, no, no, it sucks. Then you got to drag that ink around and it's just a mess, right? So my, my first thing would be to try is increase your speed. So we'll go increase speed. Ah, I'm leaning over this thing quite a bit today. Um, and we want to go above 6.5 volts and do a tester with it, right? Same hand motions, do everything you're doing, blah, 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 blah. If when you do this, the ink spills out instantly, or maybe it takes longer, it's something to note, something to record, right? If it comes out really, really, really quick, then what we're going to know is that we're having needle skip inside the machine that's being caused by the direct drive because of that hang actually being accelerated a little bit. <laughs> the increased force is going to create a spot where that, that tension of that liquid at the end of the machine is going to be broken by having more force shoved against it. It's going to make the ink come over top of the needle and just blow out of it, right? If it holds well until you hit the skin and then it just ex explodes out, we also know that the increased force that that actual tension off of that needle is probably going to be creating an issue and that, that single is going to be flexing more off the back end of the tube, which is going to increase the amount of stuff that's actually going to come out of it. So it's kind of complex. Increase the speed, see if anything works better. If it does work better, rock and roll. If it doesn't, you're probably just going to be ending up with a single needle curse that you have to run the machine extremely specifically <laughs> to get it to actually go in the skin. Now, next ones we were going to talk about with this was <clears throat> Instead of increasing speed or increasing the hang of the needle because you want to be able to see what you're doing, we want to decrease uh, tube slash needle throw. What do I mean by that? We have the end of the tube tip. And we have our needle coming out. It's a single needle, right? So you're not going to need four mil of that thing coming out of the bottom. You want to have, I mean, literally at full extension of your cam where it's going to be down at the bottom, you want to have just barely a tip of that needle coming out. Just, just a little bit. And what we're going to start doing instead of leading off the needle is leading off the tube. So if we start leading off the tube, and I mean like we're going to have just a little hair because it, there's not a whole lot of effort that's going to be required for a single, even a bug pin single needle to break through the epidermis, which the epidermis is only <laughs> as a point zero, 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 five. <laughs> is that right? Meters in thickness. <laughs> it's a micrometer. I, I think that's right. Is it five or six zeros? It's really small. Right? Everyone's thinking about how thick the skin is in general. And you're always thinking about all the connective tissues and all the stuff that's underneath it as being the skin. And yeah, that is the skin. But we aren't dealing with all of the skin. We're only dealing with the top layer of the dermis. So to do it, all you have to do is just break through that top layer of the epidermis to get into the top layer of the dermis, right? So if we just barely have a scraper coming out that, 
and we have a really good stretch on the skin, you can just basically bury your tube and utilize pressure to see if that's actually going to increase the ability of that, that tattoo to be done. Now, when you do that, <clears throat> one of two things is gonna happen. One, you're not gonna be able to see anything you're doing <laughs> because you're leaving off the tube. You'll be like, oh my gosh, I can't see where my needle is. But I mean, you draw with microns, right? You don't sit there and look at the tip of your micron coming into lines when you're doing it on paper. It's just relearning a new technique. So if you're gonna be doing this for paying customers, I say probably take a bit of time, practice on yourself, some friends, some fake skin, something like that, so you can learn or teach yourself not to be looking at the needle tip. So try that. If that works, boss. You know that basically what was happening is the needle was too far out. It didn't have enough actual pull back into the tube to grab pigment until it came out, which means that when it was hitting the skin, it was flexing and dumping all the pigment out. Right? You drag it back in a little bit further, further, further until you're comfortable with it. And I mean, the, the minimum, this is how I would approach. I just have a little scraper come out and just try to run it. But that's me. I'll take a break there and reset my memory card because it started to go off. Um, so next one off of this, and Brian and I had talked about this on the show, is that needles are constructed in two ways, right? We're gonna have our single needle coming off of our bar, which I might as well just leave this but broken like that. And when it's come off, you can have the solder point, right? This is the solder, either up or down. So if you're running solder down on this, which that would mean that the solder line of the needle is against the back of the tube, flip it. Put a little bit of bend in it so that just the needle tips are gonna be coming down and bending and coming just against the, the very, very tip of that, that actual tube and see if that improves your flow. If not, flip it backwards, right? Having that extra <clears throat> support against the back of the actual tube, right, as it's coming out, may also decrease the amount of flex that we're gonna be getting off of it when it strikes the skin, especially if you're pushing forward, right? If you have your, your vent, on the tube, burp. You're gonna be moving with that vent towards everything that you're trying to do. You're gonna be rotating your machine as you do it as well, right? Keeping it steady against the back, which will be able to really control that ink flow that's coming out because it'll decrease the amount of skip that's gonna be going on. So, there's the next one. We'll go flip the loop. Remember loop left, loop right, all that other stuff. Depends on who makes your needles nowadays, but that's that. And I think the last one that I come up with uh, after thinking about this for a couple days is to like literally thicken your pigments. If you're, you're gonna be using, you know, some of the very thin brands that are out there commercially available, grab some, we'll go thicken. Thicken the ink, right? Um, go grab some vegetable glycerin, 99% pure, food grade, all that stuff, right? And add a little bit to an ink cap when you're getting started. And this is gonna do one of two things, right? Man, this purple is toast. Go back to black. When you add it, so we'll say we got an ink cap that's half full with your black, right? We put a drop of that stuff in here. Bloop. Bloop. A vegetable glycerin. One is going to do. Well, one one thing is going to do is make it thicker, right? So we're going to have a thicker or more viscous, more viscous fluid that is going to change exactly how it exits the tube because it's going to be slowed down. Right? If you're using really thin pigments that tend to flow really quickly, maybe we can stop some of that splatter and just increase a little bit of drag. I mean, at the same time, if you, if you really don't want to pull your needle in, having a more viscous fluid when you're actually doing your lining is going to increase your ability to actually transmit it to the skin because it's going to end up sticking to the needle, right? As long as your needle is coming all the way back in on the pull into the tube, it's going to be able to grab some pigment. As it's coming back out, if it's sticky, rather than really runny, it's going to be pulling along with that needle, right? If it's really thin, it's just gonna come in and out and you're only gonna get a little bit on it. So that's one thing. And then two, what you're gonna do is you're gonna decrease, 
I don't like fat breathing, I'm talking so much, sorry. <clears throat> You're gonna decrease the concentration of the actual pigment, which is kind of cool with single needles as well, because it, if you've been doing them before, or you, you know, you're somebody who has practice with this stuff, you know how easy it is to blow out over certain parts of the body? Now, if you decrease the concentration of the actual pigment that's going into the skin, you're gonna decrease the chances of you actually having a blowout or especially leaky lines later in the future because you're not packing way too much into the space, right? So this is, this is good to do anyways when you're doing these types of works um, because it's easier, especially with a single needle, to build. <laughs> to build the actual tones rather than just try to put them in all at once. That was just done anyways. Anyways, so there you go, Sebastian. This is, this is what we came up with. Let us know if this helps. At the same time, if we can actually see what you're doing and how it's working, please feel free to send us in a video. Um, I'd love to be able to grade or look or whatever, just right over your shoulder, you know, and hopefully come up with a better way of being able to fix this. Anyways, hope this helps. And that's it for today. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Signing off.